a deserted Highland Glade in North Scotland. The perfect setting, you might think, for Land Rover's new discovery. Monarch of the Glen, master of all its surveys, or so the advertising and marketing hype would have you believe. Actually, it's probably more at home dropping the kids off at school in Surbiton and going on to tackle the wilds of the Sainsbury's car park. But this is the mad 4x4 marketing scene, where reality takes a second place to the myth of off-roading. And you think by buying a vehicle like this, you're granted the freedom of the wilderness. Land Rover always like to get the most out of their body tooling. After all, current Defender doesn't look that different from Series 3 Land Rover from 25 years ago. The Range Rover was introduced in 1969 and went for almost 20 years before it was changed. Now we've got new Discovery, just under 10 years from the original launch. But though the vehicle looks the same, make no mistake, this is an entirely new vehicle from the wheels up. New Discovery is longer and wider with a, a wider rear track and there's lots more space in the back for the sixth and seventh seats which are now forward facing with clever headrests that swing down from the roof. Surprise, surprise, it's going to be more expensive when it launches in November, 25 to 35,000 pounds. But the major changes are under the skin. First surprise, under the bonnet, there's a new diesel engine not a BMW. It's a five-cylinder, 2.5-litre new diesel engine developing 136 brake horsepower and a massive 232 pounds-feet of torque. But more importantly, it delivers that torque really low down in the rev range. There's 80% available from just 1,300 revs and 90% available from 1,450 RPM. Now, you might think that's technical gobbledygook but it's very important to discovery owners who tow, because so many of them have heavy boats or caravans and horse trailers. And that means you can move away from rest without slipping the clutch or struggling with low range. But when you do decide to emulate the adverts and the articles in the car magazines in your brand new 4x4, and you find somewhere in this crowded island where you can go off-road, it's a situation that I must say is heavily frowned upon by the ramblers, the horse riders and the mountain bikers. Well then, you get into a seriously high-tech scene in the new Discovery. In the first place, the steering has been changed to avoid kickback and fight on rough surfaces. The rear suspension is now self-leveling with air springs and that means that you can raise the height of the vehicle when you're going over rough ground. And the vehicle also automatically sense when the middle of the car is grounded and the rear wheels are spinning and it'll raise the back end automatically. There's a new anti-lock braking system that works really well off-road and a thing they call electronic traction control so that the traction to the wheels is done electronically and not by a viscous coupling and that removes the need for a lockable central diff. And there's also a thing called hill descent control. Press a button and the vehicle will automatically maintain a speed of between four and seven miles an hour depending on gear down the steepest hill. Now it's not doing it through engine braking, it's automatically giving braking effect to front and rear axle to get the maximum possible grip. And that is a very safe system indeed. Roger, you've been driving off-road for more hundreds of years than I care to remember, but I mean, this vehicle seems very sophisticated, lots of electronic gizmos. Do we really need them? Well, I wouldn't put it down as electronic gizmos. What we're trying to do is make the vehicle more user-friendly. How many times have you been with colleagues or other people driving off-road when they've struggled to find the centre diff lock or they've struggled to find low range? Um, instead of having a lever that moves in several directions as a transfer lever does on Land Rover products, we've got a forwards and a backward movement. We've got low range, we've got high range and that's all you have to worry about. 
the electronic traction control will look after the rest. The hill descent will help you descend hills even if you're not used to selecting first gear. So I think we've made the car user friendly even if we have used electronics to make it work easier for people. One of the major criticisms of old Discovery was that unpleasant lurching and rolling on quite gentle tarmac curves and dips. Drivers got used to it, but it did give passengers a queasy ride. The car seemed to lurch over to an angle and then settle at that angle through a bend. Now comes ACE, Active Cornering Enhancement. There's an electronically controlled hydraulic ram at each corner, and that works to keep new Discovery on a level plane through the bends. Hurrah! There's no denying the effectiveness of the electronic gizmos across country with the new Discovery. But for me, the most impressive factor is now the way it performs on the road. At high speed, it's very stable and gone is the lurching and swaying that used to put so many people off. It's now a very sophisticated road car.